In 1942, the Japanese-American community suffered the ultimate indignity and injustice by their forcible relocation from their homes to the U.S. internment camps of World War II. Fearful and uncertain of what the future would hold in the country that was for many the only home they knew, they waited for the day when they could return home and pick up the pieces of their shattered lives. After the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the subsequent surrender of Japan, the Japanese American community began the painful process of reintegrating into American society. Uncertain of the possible repercussions stemming from the lingering resentment and prejudice in a post-war environment, many felt it was necessary to become as American as possible at the expense of their Japanese ancestry. Several generations later, many began to question the disconnect from their cultural heritage, realizing that they could be an American without forsaking the language and traditions of their ancestral home. From this new spirit emerged the Japanese bilingual, bicultural program, founded upon the hope that a treasured way of life for future generations would not be forgotten. Here, several of the founders recall the formation of the program. The Japanese bilingual program was founded, and I think, you know, the group of us who were really committed to this were committed because, you know, we had a commonality. We were either born in um, an American internment camp or we, um, the, uh, people were older, adults in it. And with that experience of being rejected by America, it, you know, it was like a rejection of our culture and, and negating who we are. And through this program, we were able to affirm and give affirmation to our, our children to be proud of who they are, to contribute, and, and get our culture back. And, and I think um, it, it has accomplished that. One of the things that I think that um, most Japanese Americans felt um, was that the Japanese Americans became too assimilated after the war. There was the need to overcome the adversities of the, of the camp experience and to become 200% Americans. And do, in doing so, we lost a lot of our culture and heritage. And I think that those of us who were at, at a certain point in our lives felt that it was important to regain that, that the language and the culture. I felt that um, there wasn't anything uh, relevant to our cultural heritage in the schools. And I knew Chinese bilingual, uh, Spanish bilingual, and Filipino bilingual was offered in the school district. And so I thought, why not start a Japanese bilingual program, something that's relevant to our culture and um, something that we can celebrate the diverse cultures that are here in San Francisco. I think there were a couple of other things that um, during that period influenced our success. Uh, one of them was that the Lau versus Nichols uh, Supreme Court decision had just been handed down by the Supreme Court and that required the San Francisco Unified School District to provide bilingual education. So although we as a group were approaching bilingual education in a somewhat different, uh, from a somewhat different perspective, um, we, we worked with the other bilingual groups and so we had a lot of support for the prog program even though it was approached from a slightly different way, a perspective. I think that really helped the fact that the different minorities worked together. Um, I think another thing that really ha helped us was we were dealing with the first elected Board of Education and the board members were eager to do their jobs well and to hear the community and hear the parents and I think that really helped us. Um, so I think just politically it was good timing for us. The school system is a, is a big institution and uh, I never dealt with trying to change, make a change in an institution like that before, but it was worth the struggle and, and we got together a bunch of people, got the community organized and we went at it. Where I got really involved in the program was that uh, one day Phyllis Monsner came to me and says, you know, we're having some uh, 
problem with these uh, politicians. Can you handle it for us? So I said, sure, why not? In the old days, we had to go to board meetings over and over again to fight for our rights and fight for a place and for our mere existence, for funds to continue the program, to keep the, uh, the sensei and the teachers alive. We were like orphans. We politically handled um, uh, getting a, a, a site for us, a home. The quality of the program depended on the parents' participation. And uh, I saw the notice in the Hokobei Mainichi about the community meeting. And I said, oh, there's a program that I think I'm interested in. I was very interested in it because I felt that the K through three that we were going to attempt would be the very years that would be very critical for my children to have a positive identification with their bicultural, bilingual beginnings. We, we had that several community forums to check on the interest level of people and, and we started organizing and, and working from there. But basically it was a committed handful of people who uh, did all the work. And I think that's why we were successful. We had uh, people who were parents and we had people who were not parents, people who were uh, sanseis, niseis, kibes. And it was a cross-cultural group, but it was just a handful of people. And, and through this experience, I really realized that, you know, you only need a handful of people to make change, that you can facilitate change and make things relevant. That belief continued to inspire future generations of parents, teachers, and senseis to work towards the continued success of the program with determination and passion. My husband and I feel very strongly that um, we want her to know her roots. We want her to be proud of who she is. And we want her to know um, a second language because I grew up only speaking English. My parents are Nisei and they were in, in internment camps. And so they did not push the Japanese thing with us. So I want to give my daughter a different uh, opportunity. I think it's the link to our uh, cultural uh, gap here in the United States. Uh, we feel that in order to continue this great uh, culture here in the United States and in, especially in San Francisco, uh, we do need to have some people that understand in Japanese culture as well as some language. So each of our kids have gone through the program. Uh, we enjoy the senseis being there and as well as the curriculum and appreciate the Japanese culture that they are learning there. I think the beautiful thing about this program is how dynamic, close-knit and supportive this community can be. Despite the diversity of people and interests, we somehow manage to get things to come together to create these beautiful and wonderful learning experiences for our students. I think for the children, certainly they're getting the interdisciplinary academic uh, core curriculum as well as the, um, the bilingual, uh, the cultural aspects. Well, for me, I'm, I know that if I hadn't gone through JBVP, I probably would have never learned how to read and write. And because of the basics that I learned at Clarendon, I actually um, went in, when I went into high school, I took Japanese as a second language. And now um, at State, I've actually decided to major in Japanese. So I think that was because of learning some of the basics in elementary school. The path to success has not always been easy. Along the way, the program experienced its share of growing pains and challenges. There were some problems a few years ago when the original vision we had uh, back 30 years ago was uh, being contested. And that there was some talk about changing the major thrust of the program. And I was uh, very surprised, very grateful, 
that the parents in the program had the energy and the conviction to fight that kind of change, and uh, they won. So the conviction and the ideals are very strongly there yet. The vision of the program in Clarendon was changed drastically. Uh, what happened was that originally it was Japanese American oriented and then later it was not that way anymore. What happened was that it was such a uh, good program that uh, people who are really not that interested in, in uh, Japanese American and uh, Japanese culture came in and they kind of took over. And uh, they took over mainly because they wanted a safe school where the, pro where the uh, scholastics are, were very high. And that created a certain friction one of the key things that the uh, program at Diabla treasures senseis, the paraprofessional who are Japanese speaking. Many parents, teachers, senseis, and students from the past and present were eager to recall several of their most cherished memories of the program. Here are just a few. そう日本本当に嬉しく思ってね、あの、スタートいたしました。それがその気持ちを今でも覚えております。I really enjoyed the undokai. There was a lot of parent participation, a lot of um, teacher sensei participation, student participation. My most vivid memory of Clarendon are the performing arts night. For some reason, I remember practicing. Um, quite a bit for those and it was nice because um, sometimes we'd get broken up into groups and we got to choose our own songs and dance and some groups would do it in English, others pick Japanese songs. So it was like a nice mixture of both Japanese and English. This fall I got a real charge out of Undokai. If you were there you could really feel the community spirit. It was shared by students, teachers, staff and parents too. And day to day you'll find involvement in the classroom and out by caring people. They're present. It's special. This is a very exciting time for the JBBP. With each passing year, the program grows stronger and continues to explore opportunities to improve bilingual and bicultural education. In 2001, a special grant was awarded for the development of software specifically designed for Japanese bilingual education for the elementary school environment. The project director for this grant is Mickey Heitzman. This grant was awarded in 2001, and we have one and a half year left to complete this project. One of the project goal is to bring technology into Japanese class. Um, we are using iBooks computer in the Japanese class. And then I believe it is rare to use um, computer in foreign language class in K25 setting. We are also developing a software called Adventure in Nihongo. It is a flashcard version. And this will be featured in national conference next January. 
Um, I'm hoping this project will bring the JVV, JVVP to higher level. The program today would not be where it is if it had not been for the efforts of the entire community working together from the beginning. I see the parents coming in and uh, their commitment to the program and they're unselfish to uh, devote their, their times to the students and, um, and that's what makes great being here. I really love teaching in this program because I feel like we're a big family and we're a true community. There's uh, parents' participation and they really um, are with me, whatever I do and plan, and they support me. And children, all the children, um, benefit from that. I enjoy so much working with the, not only the children, but our JBBP parents. <laughs> they are very great and they are very supportive. I come from a very Japanese traditional home, so when I was outside it was, it was hard to understand everybody else, but being part of this program, um, it really helped me to feel like I fit in, and I had fun with a lot of other Japanese Americans, and was able to celebrate with my whole classroom these wonderful days, and do everything from arts and crafts, to singing songs, to reading, to writing, and just interacting in both languages and I didn't feel like I was a minority. The Japanese Bilingual Bicultural Program serves as a national model for the integration of language and cultural studies in elementary school education. The program proves that public education can work and thrive when the entire community comes together to work towards the common goal of providing the best education possible for their children. Since its founding in 1973, the program continues to flourish on the strength of the people who dedicate their time and energies to make sure every child has the opportunity to learn, to grow, to succeed. By continuing to honor the past, the generations yet to come will continue to celebrate the future. The dedication of the parents and the teachers has been just <clears throat> immense. Uh, the fundraising, continually, the uh, time involvement from the teachers, all the extras that are given to a wonderful program for students. I am really amazed at that you know this uh, commitment to the Japanese bilingual program has continued for 30 years. I mean, that's astonishing to me. I think it's something that I will always be proud of. Um, it was something that we worked very hard for and has, I think, just, just blossomed. I think it's probably gone beyond what we, you know, hoped or thought about at that time. All of us feel uh, a true sense of uh, sacred responsibility uh, to uphold the uh, integrity and spirit of the JBP um, and to try to uh, continue uh, what was uh, started uh, now three decades ago by the founding families. Happy 30th anniversary, JBVP. Congratulations. Happy 30th anniversary to the JBVP. I'm happy to be a part of the JBVP, and I wish it all success in the future. Happy 30th anniversary, JBVP. おめでとうございます。ハッピーアニバーサリー。JBBP。JBBP30周年おめでとうございます。これからも私たちと一緒にどんどん栄えていくことを願っております。ありがとうございます。ハッピー30アニバーサリー。JBBP。30周年おめで